falling from a heavy sky. What do you want me to do? To do for you, to see you through. Oh, this is all a dream. So, good morning. Today is Wednesday, July the 10th, 2019 AD. This is Uncle Benny's Creepy Campfire Stories, the Sludge Report edition, a side project. I'm your host, Uncle Benny. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all my brothers, all my sisters, and all my friends. That was 
The Grateful Dead, live in February of 1973, playing the great song Box of Rain. And I didn't expect to play the whole song. It's been a while since I've uh, I've been through it. And um, the line, love will see you through, is... Uh, it's really the it's really beautiful kind of comes towards the end <laughs> I didn't remember that I was hoping to just play a little bit of it and part of the reason is I need to do a little housekeeping is that yesterday I played uh, I played a clip from the movie Network 1976 so 43 years old and the clip is widely available when I say widely there's several instances of it but it was widely available um, uh, and I picked one and played it and just recorded it on the screen and the sound and I received a copyright strike okay fair enough excuse me I, I kind of analyzed the fair use principles and uh, or rules excuse me and I felt uh, in the context it was transformative of its meaning and um, by being in the Uncle Benny's Creepy Campfire Stories uh, sludge report and um, other things the fact that you can quote from copyrighted work and not if you don't reproduce the entire work you can quote so I felt a five minute clip from a two hour movie I don't know exactly how long it is but 90 minutes to two hours let's say uh, is kind of like a quote you know I, I made some points um, I, I appealed the uh, um, or contested it however you want to say it and um, well Warner Brothers shut me down they said nope we stand by our claim they wanted to know if I wanted to appeal it and you know, I I'd sure I'd love to ask someone a question: Is why is has this this clip five minute clip been up here for years? I mean, I think it was like seven years or something. It's been there and other places as well. I think you can go find it. So if you did click the link yesterday in the description after I had to edit it, which took all day long for some reason to take out that five minutes, I don't know why that happened. Um, usually it's a lot quick, more quick. It it excuse me, it processes faster than that. Um, so, you know, apologize for that. Uh, I am truly sorry because even though these things stand alone, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, I've got to see it on that date or the news is expired. No, that's not the point. The point isn't to tell you the news, you know, that's not the point of this, um, these videos at all. And, uh, so, you know, it, it would be valid. They, by the way, they were going to, get back to me in up to 30 days <laughs> oh that's terrible well thankfully they did get back and um and uh by the end of the day and by the view counts it looked like at least two or three people reviewed the the video now i don't know how much of it they watched um of course the latter half of that if you haven't seen it yet i start talking about the story in boca raton that had to do with um the holocaust and the Jewish population there, at least Holocaust survivors. You know, I mean, look, it, it, when you get into talking about uh, Jews, people paint it with a broad brush and they think you're, if you even mention it, you know, it's 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 like a sacred cow. You cannot say anything. What did I say in the video yesterday? Well, if you haven't seen it, I, I encourage you to watch it. But please go look at the network clip first. I find it important. It's sort of a lead-in to the, the whole, um, you know, it's, it's the... It's the intro to the entire, um, I don't want to call it a presentation, whatever podcast, whatever it is, whatever we're doing here, okay, whatever I'm doing here. And then I also received a copyright claim against um, the song at the end, which it's kind of curious to me. This is a little bit of a um, new experience, and I, you know, I don't want to take any money off anybody's table. In fact, I said go rent it, go I don't know if I said rent, but go see the movie network. You're probably going to have to check it out of your library, uh, get it on Netflix or something like that. Patronize them. It's a great movie. I mean, it's really a really good movie. And it's it's uh, it's apropos to our times and to your life. If you've never seen it, you should watch it, uh, you know. And the same with the song at the end. And now I can't think of what it is. Uh, I forgot what the song was I played yesterday. Oh, uh, I think it was, yeah, it's by War. W A R War, um, the world is a ghetto. Great song, really fit well with what was happening yesterday. But I I received a claim on that, so I think in the final edited version I used the feature. I haven't gone and watched it to the end where it 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 just erased the song. I don't think I think the 
the video still keeps rolling. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening to this little preamble here. I just want to do a little housekeeping on that, that the Sludge Report 2, Sludge Report 1-1, or I-I, as it reads in the title, for July 9th, 2019 AD, um, mad as hell, I'm not going to take any more, was, um, was the original title. Uh, but, you know, I had to strip strip the... Uh, strip the the um juicier bits off okay um you know meaning the uh high high production value the the network clip and then the the music at the end otherwise you just listen to me you know um and yeah i just like to dress it up a little bit with some things like i did this morning now the box of rain is um it's a beautiful song written by phil lesh of the grateful dead uh, when his father was dying back in the early 70s or you know late 60s early 70s I know the first time they performed it was September 1970 um, and this version was from 1973 but uh, he wanted to write a song for his father and he would have to drive a ways to to the nursing home to visit him and uh, you know he didn't come up with the words right away but the music can pend it but you know the um, the song is beautiful the words are beautiful I'm not saying that's the most uh, the best version of that song but I won't get a copyright strike because this is in uh, you know thankfully the Grateful Dead they were big fans of having audience tapers taping their shows now I'm not trying to turn anyone on to the Grateful Dead um, it is a favorite of mine however one of my creepy campfire stories coming up is actually going to be about Dead and Company which is the latest incarnation of some of the members um, you may have heard of them touring around Excuse me, um, but you know I don't have time to do all these projects. I'm, I'm, uh, I've got a lot of other things going. I would like to, but it's, uh, you know, to do them right. The creepy campfire stories are going to be more, a little bit more produced videos where this is just live without a net. You know, I want to have an outline and I've collected materials and things like this so I can make a nice presentation that's um, pretty. There's no, there's no room for real sidetracks and things like that I have I'm gonna say what I you know I plan to say and um, it should be pretty pithy or, and meaty or whatever the word would be um, and uh, there is one I want to do on the Grateful Dead is what I'm saying and it has to do with uh, mind control CIA drugs uh, Satanism you name it okay uh, occult um, secret societies sound interesting yeah it will be and as I'll say when I do that video, this is coming from somebody who, who um, you know, when I was, uh, I, I, I was really into music when I was, um, you know, early teens, before I, really before I became a teenager. And uh, I rented the movie, Grateful Dead the movie, when I was, I don't know, maybe 13. And, uh, but no later than 14, I'm sure, I remember the best I can remember I, I should say and uh, there was one note one note that struck me I'd never heard anything like it it just resonated within me of a certain song and I'll talk about that in that video when it comes out and it it just uh, well maybe the words enchanted me although it was a lot more innocent than that um, for me it, it really just was a you know masterful sound that um, captured something and uh, the tone the pace the song everything about it you know is very beautiful and and I'm telling you like this song I played it here why because I'm casting some satanic no it's a beautiful song it really is um, so anyway don't let me taint it for you because I mentioned that about talking about a cult and Satanism and this and that you name a, a band um, or a, a rock band or especially modern music and there's some dark forces involved Okay, doesn't mean the players and musicians are Satanists necessarily or anything like that, but um, being used and played like instruments themselves in many ways, not just by uh, by demonic spirits, um, but by powers that shouldn't be, which is what we're here to talk about. The powers that shouldn't be, mind control, propaganda, uh, manipulation of your soul, poisoning of your soul, and things like this. Okay. So anyway, the box of rain will ease your pain and love will see you through. Beautiful lines. The box of rain, just so you don't freak out, um, you know, it, it actually was uh, regarding the earth being a ball of rain. 
and but ball did not seem to fit as much as box which i agree box of rain is a you know it's an image that catches you for a second because what's a box of rain <laughs> you know but it's very beautiful isn't it right i think so there's lots of great lines in that that's a great song um and i didn't intend to play the full five minutes but i i kept thinking that love will see you through was earlier in the lyrics um maybe that's just one that that i always remember the song for anyway i hope you enjoyed it i won't get a copyright strike for it that's really what this was all about i had to think well we're, what i want to play some intro music um but and i've got another purpose for some of the uh the prior um sp spiritual hymn type music i play i'm going to play some of that in a minute but you know this came to mind because of the um as I was going through some of the articles to talk about here, uh, the words that came to mind and love was part of it in the, in the word. When I mean the word, I'm talking about what Bible say. And uh, that, that came into my mind. Yeah. So anyway, enough about that. This is probably the longest preamble I've had. Let's, let's get into it, I guess. And again, welcome to the Sludge Report. This is Uncle Benny, your host. And what I'm, we're talking about is framing the news. This is how I read the news. This is what I see and what I believe that as a as a uh, child of God, and guarding your heart and trying to get through um, and walk out what we're meant to be, this is like a fly in the ointment. The the news of the day, right? Which most people are operating in. If you know they may may uh, um, have varying degrees of awareness, but people hear stuff and and you know what? It's create creates a climate. Um, people are walking around and they're stained. Bible say, keep yourself unspotted from the world. What does that mean? Well, avoiding a lot of the sins and, and things like that. Otherwise, yeah, it means that. But I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you my application for it in this moment is when you listen to all these poisonous stories and things, the doom. I'm not doing doom dots again. I don't have a screenwriting tool as doing a, doing a, um, and using the software I'm using. Um, and I'm not doing the doom dots, but the doom and the gloom and the terror and the, chaos and the disorder and the negativity and the manipulation and spin how are you gonna how are you gonna get through your day and not be affected by that if you ingest it make no mistake when you read it talk about it hear it you're ingesting it guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life and we're going to get into that because i want to talk about uh an, an article that's right here um We'll get to it. It's not the first one I want to get to. Psychiatric diagnoses are, quote, scientifically meaningless, unquote, ellipsis. Sound interesting? Yeah, it is. So, at any rate, let's get into it here. Um, and I'm going to read you. I should have done this earlier. I was just going to read it off screen, but I'll just read it to you. This is this is the from the clip yesterday. And I want to preface this movie. Now, I was going to play a different clip from this movie today, but, you know, I don't want to fool with that. It took all day. It was time-consuming, and um, it was a bit uh, touch-and-go and frustrating because I could have even had my channel shut down, right? And you know what? So what? I, I have my own copies. They can take away my YouTube channel. There was life before YouTube. There's life after YouTube, right? You, you can have that for free. You can use that phrase. Whatever it is. A relationship, a job. I I picked that up a long time ago, a couple decades ago. I was working at a job and and uh, there was an issue with this particular manager and a, a lady who was much older than me had been there a while and she said, ah, there was life before this job, there'll be life after this job. <laughs> it was freeing. It was beautiful. So there's life after YouTube, there was life before YouTube, right? So... Anyway, let me get right into it. As Howard Beale said, as he made his witness, and I must make my witness today. That's what I'm doing here today. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street, and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know that air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. And we sit watching our TVs or our t internet or our phones while some local newscaster or Mr. Matt Drudge or Mr. Uh, 
David Moore, Moore, whatever, how to pronounce his name, tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. And that is, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to finish any more the, the quote, but that is what, what the message is. This is the world you're living in. This is the way it is. This is the way it's supposed to be. They'll pull up, as I always say, a bus crash deep in the heart of India where 40 children were rolled over upon and their dog crushed it's a slow news day they'll find a bus crash somewhere deep in the heart of india mark my words right this was 43 years ago right probably 15 homicides were uh nationwide now it's just chicago on a weekend how about that all right men shall wax worse and worse what bible say okay so anyway howard beale for you watch network beautiful film all right, debt piles up, deficit 25% higher since the election. Well, I'm not going to get into this story um, other than to say that what kind of spin is it? Why is this on the news today, right? Why is this the headline today? When when this, this character was elected, we were already, I don't know, what it was, at 17 or $20 trillion in debt? When I say we... I don't mean me. I didn't vote for this, did you? Oh, maybe you did. Oh, well, if you voted for it, you, you you can't complain then. Hmm, what am I talking about? Think about that. If you vote for those who would um, put us 20, put us, I mean this nation, I happen to live in the, inside the, the boundaries of the United States, <laughs> excuse me, uh, borrowing money in the trillions, and now I can't even I can't even begin. I'd have to look it up again to get into descriptors of what trillion a trillion dollars is. All right. Bible say the borrower is servant to the lender. Debt is slavery. Hmm. Think about that. You know what this headline ought to say, or how you ought to read it, or I ought to read it. Debt piles up. How about your shackles got tighter? How about the ball and chain? You just got another one on your other foot. How about the whip comes down? Right? The borrower is slave to the lender, not servant. I got a credit card sent to me, and they had changed their, um, well, I'd already had the credit card, but you know how when they expire, they, they send you a new one. Now, I'm not saying that uh, having a credit card or borrowing any money ever is wrong. I'm not going to say that. Um, however, because it's a tool, like anything else, okay, it's a tool. So, just like the internet, is it good, is it bad, is it evil, or is it, you know, it's a tool. It can be both. It can be used either way, right? So, the credit card came to me, and the new one the new expiration date and everything said freedom now some of you may even have this card <laughs> I just laughed I threw it on the ground I opened the envelope I saw it I laughed and I just threw it on the floor I was laughing it was funny it was absurd it was also a little bit creepy and and uh Anyway, every time I've had to call them on the phone for anything, maybe not every single time, but I've mentioned it to them before. I even asked, this, can I get a different card that says something else? Well, that's, no, it's just what it is in that particular company. And uh, every time I see it, though, it's actually a good reminder, you know, especially someone like me. I look at that as like they call evil good in these times and up is down, black is white, right? Freedom is slavery. Freedom is slavery. So if you've got a card like that that says freedom on it, I want you to look at it when you pull it out next time and remember that, that uh, the borrower is servant to the lender. And I hope you can pay it off every month um, and stick it to the man. But, you know, sometimes, again, it's a tool. And, uh, you know, just, just be careful. That's all. Anyway, see, this video, I want it to be 20, 30 minutes. 
and we're already going we're on track for an hour at least right now that's sad I'm sorry I really am your time is precious so is mine and I really want to make it worthwhile so I hope it is um, and you know you don't have to listen to it all in one go if you're interested in listening to it at all um, I, I do know like for example you've been seeing a pretty much a stagnant screen for most of this video and um, I do move around I highlight things as I'm talking there there's is, there is some value in looking at it but um, it's also I'm sure something you could just you know listen to when you're ready to take a nap or something like that because I might put you to sleep <laughs> all right so enough self-deprecating humor uh, Deficit 25% higher since election. So what is this? Is this, uh, again, the left versus right type of thing? Um, and, you know, is it a slam against Congress, slam against this character? I don't really know. I haven't clicked on it. The point is, is that what difference does it make at this point? Or how how, how did uh, how did that other character say it? At, po at this point, what difference does it make, right? Listen, before this character ever got into office... How many times did they raise the quote-unquote debt ceiling? You ever heard this phrase, the debt ceiling? You know, translation, credit limit, right? All of us understand, if you've ever had a credit card, what a credit limit is, what your limit is. You've got a limit on your card, what you get approved for, right? They don't call it your debt ceiling. Well, why don't they call it a credit limit? Because... It just sounds different. It has a different. It's mind control. They raised the debt ceiling. We're going higher. <laughs> no, you're going deeper. Think about that, right? They're, they raised the debt ceiling. We're going higher. We got stuff we need to pay for. It's it's uh it makes sense that we borrow more trillions of dollars. We need to expand the military. This that and the other thing, right? We need to uh, bail out this or that corporation, this or that bank. You know, they'll pay it back. All right. We, we need to do this. Raising the debt ceiling. No, you're digging a deeper pit. For who? Well, the American, uh, quote unquote, taxpayer. I believe the average, average uh, person that you see in the grocery store driving down the road sitting next to you in church, sitting next to you in school, sitting next to you at your book club, whatever, believes that they're paying for the roads and for the schools and all these things. Well, yeah, that's funded by tax, but generally you're paying interest on debt. That's what it's all about because they borrow this money from the, the uh, Federal Reserve. And if you haven't ever heard it before, it's about as federal as Federal Express. That's another mind control word. It's not a part of the United States government. So much deception. So much deception. It's I haven't even scratched the surface of it in my own understanding. It's so... The, the lies are so black. They're blacker than black. Okay? So dark. So twisted. So the, the, they've woven... A net. They've woven webs. Unbelievable. All right, there we go. Sidetrack over. Did not mean to get into this. Let's let's get into this um, story here. Okay. Uh, a Texas doctor says American Airlines nearly kicked her off a flight for an quote unquote inappropriate romper. You know, I had to think a minute, what's a romper? That's what kind of, I, I actually clicked on the story because I'm like, what's a, I forgot what a romper is. And I'm thinking she's wearing like a tiny little uh, uh, summer super short dress. Well, it actually, it, it, it's not that at all. It has, and I, I did imagine the top part, right? Um, which you'll see in a minute. But it's shorts and, uh, and the top. Or maybe just the top's the romper. I don't know. I, I guess somebody watching this will tell me later. Um, at any rate, so, first of all, why does it matter it's a Texas doctor? Okay, What if she worked at Subway? Would it say a, sub, uh, you know, a sandwich artist from Texas says American, Islands near, American Airlines nearly kicked her off a flight for a quote-unquote inappropriate romper? I don't think so. Okay. 
What if she's a hotel maid? A hotel maid says American Airlines, a Texas maid says American Airlines nearly kicked her off a flight for an inappropriate romper. Mm, I can't see that either. But she's a doctor. Okay. This this fits up there with uh, a, um, a female military veteran. Or a female veteran, says American Airlines. You know, I can imagine that. Imagine saying that. Um, a, uh, a former detective says American Airlines. Nearly, a former police officer says, you know. Let me, let me tell you where I'm going with this. The Bible says in James 2, it says, If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and you do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. You're going to find, if you think about it, again, if this we're here to think about it. We're here to frame things in the Word of God that all around us are respecters of persons. And it's cultural in, in American society, I've found. You, know, you even know the phrase, a doctor, a lawyer, an Indian chief, right? Well, these are positions of uh, of um, of degree, you know, where it makes a difference if someone says they're a doctor or a lawyer um, or an Indian chief of, of the weight, or you know, like for example, UFO sightings. Well, if the guy happened to be a former police officer, it makes it more credible. Why? Well, sure. There's, I'm sure there's some training and observations or people who get into that. Um, well, maybe it used to be. There's, that's, a, that's, complete, that's, that's a creepy campfire story waiting to happen as well. Um, a Texas doctor says American Airlines nearly kicked her off a flight. <coughs> what difference does it make that she's a doctor? Well, there's a reason they're putting this story up at the top in our face. Product placement, right? There's a lot of things going on in this story, as we'll see. Okay. But it's important to know, Bible say that when you have respect to persons, you commit sin. Why doesn't it just say an American woman? Meaning, you know, American Airlines. This woman was coming, by the way, I'll just skip ahead here a minute. She was coming back from Jamaica, Kingston, I believe, is where they picked her up and wouldn't let her get on the plane or, you know, unless she covered up or something. Um, it's just American. Uh, I don't know if she had family there or was tourist or whatever. Um, but she they point out she's a doctor that's great you know she earned her degree super she's a doctor but why is it important but notice all i'm saying is notice that you know if you've uh if someone served in the military or worked in the military um uh or is a doctor or an attorney or something like that Watch out for preferential treatment or all of a sudden, you know, things part for them because they're a special class of citizen. Okay? They're not. They're not. All right, let's move on here. Okay? A Houston woman says an American Airlines crew told her to cover up a risk being kicked off her flight coming home from Jamaica, from vacation to Jamaica. Now, let's stop right there. Someone in American Airlines and the crew probably a stewardess or a steward, told her to cover up or risk being kicked off her flight. Now, did they tell her she was being kicked off? Or did they just say, you might want to cover? You know, we don't know. I, I looked through this article. We don't know if the person, and I got another question, because this is a black woman, by the way. Um, and that's where it gets interesting, or more interesting. Did they say to her, hey, I just, you know, listen, I noticed your top there. You might want to cover up um, because you know the pilot may say something, and you might you might be kicked off because of uh, you know dress code and things like that. They didn't say she was kicked off. I don't know. Let's go on a little bit. Let's just let's just dig in. All right. Tisha Rowe could be Tisha. Tisha Rowe, a doctor and founder of telemedicine service, posted on Twitter and Instagram that American Airlines crew in Kingston briefly removed her and her son from a plane, called her romper inappropriate, and threatened to remove her from the June 30th flight if she didn't cover up. Now, 
Um, that's what she posted on Instagram. Don't forget. See, like, but this is being reported that that's what happened. That's what she reported, okay? Up here, it says they told her to cover up or risk it. Okay, well, they took her off the plane, and then she had to, you know, and they told her uh, her clothing was inappropriate. She wasn't risking it. They were saying, you've got to cover up or you're not getting back up. Okay, I'm, maybe I'm, you know, again, I'm hammering this out. I'm hammering it out, okay? Just bear with me. Roe, an African-American woman. And by the way, I, I talked about this in another episode. I don't call black people African-Americans. If you weren't born in Africa, you're not an African, okay? I don't call them Negroes, per se. I don't like being called Caucasian. It's kind of a funny word. You know what? I'm white. Maybe I'm tan sometimes. Maybe I'm pink other times. Maybe I'm pasty other times. I'm a white dude. All right. This this is just PC nonsense. Okay. I don't know when this started happening, but I remember when I was a lot younger, that wasn't really an issue. But in as early as the '90s, I do remember. I'll tell this little story again. I was I was in um, I was in Great Britain, and I ended up um, accommodating a South African guy, a white fella. And uh, by sharing the room I had at the request of the bed and breakfast owner. And so we split it and, you know, I got to be a little bit friends with him and everything. And he told me a story when he was in America and he was in Los Angeles sitting on a bus stop. And um, he had a conversation or something with the black lady sitting next to him. And he said he's from South Africa and she kind of tried to make connections like, oh, I'm African too. He said, I mean, instantly he said, no, he said, I am African. You are not African. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. And that's true. It's true. She's an American woman. And she's she's a black American woman. Okay? Um, anyway, let's take an issue with that. Uh, Roe, an African American woman, said on social media the incident was racist and misogynistic. Let's see if we find any evidence for this. Okay? Racist means means what? Okay? Um, misogynistic means what? Well, the, the word itself means um, hates women. Like, you know, the gen is gynecologist. That means woman. M the miss is like misanthropy. Um, all right, so let's go on. So here's a picture. Picture's worth a thousand words, right? And this is from her Twitter account. Here's what I was wearing when American Air asked me to the plane for a talk. Well, that's different than uh, kicking her off. I don't know what happened in the conversation. Did she say, "Well, I'm not going to cover up," and you know, I, you're going to kick me off or not? No. At which point I was asked to cover up, not told, asked out of her own mouth. When defending my outfit, I was threatened with not getting back on the flight unless I walked down the aisle wrapped in a blanket. Okay, so it looks like they both took a stand, and American Airlines did say, "You know, I we're, we may not let you back on, or we're not going to let you back on unless you cover up." Now let's look at her outfit first of all. Okay, this is a black and white photo. There, I did find a color one. And I think it's in her Twitter, and we'll see that in a minute. So this is a romper, I guess. Um, first thing I notice is that uh, these shorts are pretty tight. Well, is that a crime? No. Is it appropriate? I don't know. I don't know what it looks like from behind. I mean, this could go right up her butt crack in a real, real. Uh, a real nasty way, meaning it's like spray painted on. Uh, basically, it'd be like she, her whole bottom, you know, her whole pelvic area is naked. Now, I don't see any camel toe here, really. I can't really tell. There's a seam down the middle. Um, you know, uh, listen, that can be inappropriate. Let me tell you, you know, women can wear clothing that like yoga pants. And depending on the lighting, the color, the their body type, all these things. You know, it can be it can be quite a distraction and a um and even uh you know it's inappropriate. Okay, it's just not it's it's might as well be naked. It's kind of worse than being naked, honestly. Um, naked is probably less of a distraction or less attractive. I don't want to say attractive in a good way, but like you know, eye eye catching or anyway. So moving on. Um, all right. So this is kind of hip hugging, short shorts. Uh, but. I tell you where I can see a bit of a problem. 
Now, I don't know what she was wearing. This is obviously she took these pictures like um, in the bathroom. Here's a toilet over here. She took the pictures probably after they had, they had um, you know, talked to her about it. Um, and I would hope so. I hope it's after, not before. And this wasn't premeditated to cause an, an incident. Um, but we don't know where her top was. You know, was she showing any nipples? I don't know. But here's the problem I see with it, okay? On a flight, you can have turbulence, you know? And maybe American Airlines has had experience with rompers before or, you know, elastic type of tube tops or whatever. And I don't know how voluptuous or brustious, or what's the word I'm looking for, uh, big busted she is. You know, pictures can be deceiving. From the front, it looks like she's got some jugs. But I can see with some turbulence, her titties popping out. You know? And, you know, what are the odds of that happening? I don't know. But maybe they've had it happen before, and they're like, you know, we, we kind of need to ask you to, you know, put on a top or at least, you know, when they say wear a cover up with a blanket, does that mean when she gets on the plane, you know, she needs to kind of have a blanket kind of ready to pull up? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of things in the news that we don't we don't hear. There aren't great questions. They're horrible journalists. But the, it begs the question, is this appropriate? Well, um, not really, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, um, it's it's kind of, I don't know. You know, this is basically accentuating her breasts, and yeah, her boobies could pop out, and of course she's wearing this skin tight. You know, maybe these clothes fit her well when she went to Jamaica, and she just stayed in all-inclusive, and by the time she got back home, these are the only clean clothes she had, and now they're a lot really tight. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm kind of skipping some of the, the verses, actually, I wanted to, to, um, to read in relation to these things, and one of them was, um, you know, about the doctor thing. Okay, um, let's see. Well, I, I already talked about it enough, all right? But anyway, one thing I want to say is that she called them, she said it was racist for them to tell her to cut it. Was it because she's black? Or because that she's got uh, sexualized organs that might pop out like her boobies, right? Or maybe she's showing some camel toe or some, some buck crack. I don't know. I can't see the behind. And that might make a difference. Believe me, this may be part of the story we're not hearing. Okay? That if she turned around, these go right up her crack. You know? And that might be inappropriate. Nobody wants to see that. Trust me. Okay? Um, you know, you don't want to look like a streetwalker getting... When I mean streetwalker, I mean a, you know, a, a, a prostitute. Okay? Um, so, all right... It's going to turn a long video. Maybe I'm going to have to end it on this story. I don't want to. So I could go through here, um, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the comments that were said. Um, here you've got, now she's looks like a um, Thornley. I can't tell. She, yeah, she looks like she's a, a black lady, another fellow doctor. Let us know when the article comes out so we can retweet it until it goes viral. Now, what I want to accentuate here is that... Um, a lot of black people pile on this story and echo it being, you know, like just um, demonizing American Airlines. Now, listen, is not American Airlines is their policy? Well, they do have a policy, which is in the story, I'll tell you in a minute, about they advise passengers to dress appropriately. It means you probably shouldn't get on the, the, the plane in a um, French bikini. Is that what it's called? The one with the string up the butt? String bikini. Okay. It's probably inappropriate. Um, here, this guy's talking about a lawsuit. Get a lawyer. Discrimination. Really? Because she's because. How do you discriminate because of someone's clothing? Excuse me. So, let's see. American Air has no right to police women's bodies. You know, this is the cultural mind control here. You know, there is appropriate dress. Okay. There, there really is. There's certain um, laws of nature that come into play between men and women, and um, it's just polite society. There's reasons for it. You don't even have to be a Christian to have an understanding of this. And if you want to deny it and put it out of your mind and and um, 
just like there is no right or wrong, well, then you come up with ideas like that. So hang on a minute. I lost my place here. Let me get back to her Twitter account. You know, I hope this is helpful. I'm just riffing off this um, probably better when I was thinking it through in my own mind. Let's see here. Um, scrolling through. I'm trying to find ones that I'd seen before. You know, I want to make a, a larger point here about what's going on in our culture. Hmm. Sounds like a. Oh, yeah. What I was saying also was that, like, American Airlines policy is, you know, dress appropriately. That's what they advise their passengers. Well, one crew member. I don't think three. I doubt. What are the odds? Three crew members, uh, you know, said, whoa, you know, back the truck up. You're not, you know, we need to go talk. Or did, did one well-meaning, who knows what her his or her state of mind was or level of frustration and how many trips they'd been on. And they noticed her tube top, which maybe they'd had in turbulence, you know, uh, somebody's somebody's jugs popping out on the flight. Because, uh, you know, in a turbulence, you can drop like 10 feet in the air quick and it's rough, you know. And, uh, you know, them big boobs will jiggle and they'll pop out, they'll pop out of a shirt. Happens, I'm sure. I've never seen it, but I, mean, I can imagine it. Okay, so anyway, um, let's see. AA staff needs better training. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they do. Maybe that person was new. Do you ever think about that? Ah, think about that. Could have been a brand new stewardess or steward, right? Or could have been a very experienced steward or stewardess. Um, just to book the flight, read the tweet, promptly canceled the booking and went with another airline. This type of racial profiling and sexual discrimination cannot be tolerated. Wow. What, what the hell is going on in this world, right? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. Division. And we're being constantly divided against a, a country divided a house divided cannot stand right so why is there always this division being perpetrated and and she is being a victim you know or, or playing a victim or has some degree of perceptual victimhood i i think i think this could have been handled better by her and by um, by probably by American Airlines. I mean, something went a little wrong here, but I, how much of it had to do with her reaction to this, her perception of this, right? Now you might say, well, you're racist, Uncle Benny. You're picking on her because she's black. Okay, well, keep listening. Um, at any rate, uh, hang, see this thing with the Twitter, I can't get it to stick. Hang on a minute. One second. Got to do it again. I got it pulled up 10 times here. Um, all right, that's the article or Twitter. Here it is in color. Okay. All right. Doesn't look like any camel toe. Um, don't know what happened there. That's good. But there's that, you know, I think the top and possibly the butt side of things might have made a difference here. I'm wondering that the top wasn't a little lower at the time. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying. Or it could have been, hey, those tube tops. You know, boobs are known to fly out of them, you know. So we need you to to wear the blanket, you know. Um, if you want to wear that top, she's delivering a baby or something here. Okay, so, all right. I, I the story's taking longer than I wanted to. Um, get back to uh, get back to the article. All right. Well, my point was that in that article, there's a lot of black people who are basically jumping on the ba they're doing a pile on you know completely uncritically thinking about this no one's making any uh, maybe she deleted them but no i don't know if you can on twitter can you delete other people's comments but nobody's making any um remarks to her about her responsibility here or if there was if she invited this somehow at all you know it's all like they're misogynistic it's it's discrimination because you're black it's it's sexual um, discrimination or you know policing your body you know what they run an airline it's just like coming into a restaurant they some places are like you know you can't wear um, t-shirts you need to wear dress clothing right this is the kind of restaurant we're running it's an airline they've had decades of experience with the general public sitting next to strangers and women wearing clothing that might just you know cause a problem okay and make no mistake 
it can cause a problem. I, I, I marvel sometimes that women seem, on one hand, they seem absolutely savvy about what they're wearing and how to work it. On the other hand, they seem totally clueless as, as to what effects it has on, on the, the male gender. You know, be wise, women. It's ridiculous, you know. Yes, men have responsibilities in how to behave, but you're dealing with the public. You've got the full spectrum. And you're out there. I don't know what you're thinking or who you want to look at you. But you might just get the wrong person knocking on your door. Okay? That's all I'm trying to say. And I'm not talking rape or anything like that. I'm talking comments, groping, stares, you name it. Okay? I'm not even talking rape. Rape's not even a, usually about sex from what I understand. It's a power thing. Okay? And it has little to do with how attractive someone is. I mean, you know, it it generally does. All right? Here's what I was wearing when American asked me to be playing for a talk. At which point I was asked to cover up. All right, I already read that. Fort Worth-based American Airlines said it has apologized and reached out to the crew in Jamaica. Now, let's think about this. This crew was in Jamaica. Are they black or are they white? Is this a black crew? I don't know. You know, were these people of our own? Odds are high. Odds are high that it was a female because most stewardesses are female. Okay, there are male stewards, um, but they're not as prevalent as female. It's a fact. I don't even have to do the research. Okay. Reach out to the crew in Jamaica. They're very often in a destination. So if you're flying back and forth to Jamaica, you might have crew, one or two of them that are Jamaican. Just like if you go to, if you fly um, to France or to fly British Airways, you're going to have a British crew and, you know, so on and so forth. Now, American Airlines, maybe they're, it, it, they have no they don't do anything like that at all, and they just have a flight that goes there, and it's a you know all white crew, and you know some are from Kansas, some are from California, and all that kind of thing. I don't know. I'm just saying we don't know, and they didn't ask the question. We're concerned about Dr. Rose's comments and reached out to her and our team at the at the Kingston Airport to gather more information about what occurred. Said a statement from American Airlines spokesman Shannon Gilson. We apologize to Dr. Rowe and her son for their experience and have fully refunded their travel. We are proud to serve customers of all backgrounds and are committed to providing a positive, safe travel experience for everyone who flies with us. And I believe that. They do serve customers of all backgrounds. They do. Red or yellow, black and white, they fly American Airlines. Able-bodied, missing limbs, handicapped, overweight, underweight, sober, drunk. They serve customers of all backgrounds. On medication, psychiatric illnesses american airlines flies them okay and they're committed to providing a positive safe travel experience for everyone who flies with us you bet they are you bet they are now well i don't want to get into all that sidetrack gotta be careful sidetrack alert Roe did not respond to a request for comment but told buzzfeed news she believes a white passenger would not have asked to leave the plane you know when it's when people read this this just goes into the narrative. It feeds into the narrative. But there's an operative word here. She believes. That has no basis in reality. This is all revolving around her perceptions of what's going on. They were misogynistic. They were racist. That's why this happened. She just said it right here. She just told us. She believes a white passenger would not have been asked to leave the plane. Therefore, it was racist. So if she believes a white passenger would not have met with the same you know, talk, wearing a, a tube top with, you know, her jiggly bits going to maybe pop out. Well, that leaves one option. It, they did it because she's black. She believes this. That has nothing to do with reality. I don't care if she is a doctor. Just because you're a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief does not mean you're not subject to the same prejudices, biases, logical fallies, fallacies, erroneous beliefs, um, emotionalisms that everyone else is. That's a human being, okay? And we all are, by the way. I hope you're working them out. I hope you're learning about logical fallacies. I hope you're trying to be in the truth. I hope you're trying to master yourself and not be ruled by your emotions. And also what we're doing right here is that we're combating the uh, sinister, evil, insidious mind control, cultural mind control.
Okay. The incident sparked dozens of comments defending Rose's outfit. Well, yeah, she put it on Twitter and got an echo chamber. How about that? You know, just because you've got a thousand people clamoring, singing your tune, doesn't make it any any doesn't make it right. Right? It's true. Um, and criticizing American Airlines, some users said they. You know, here's the, here's the thing where you got to be careful. You don't don't grab a, grab a strange dog by the tail. Are these people? critically thinking or just criticizing aha there you go some users said they have seen they're not asking these questions apparently they're just chiming in some users said they have seen other passengers go unquestioned for more revealing apps outfits that may be true that may be true but does that mean that th that substantiates racism because she was singled out no you know what some passengers get on the plane with with uh, weapons and drugs and they go unchecked does that mean that people who do go checked are being singled out? No, it means they somebody happened to be paying attention or doing their job in that moment, whereas before, for whatever reason, it was deprioritized, meaning like, let's say the outfit, maybe maybe the, uh, the flight attendants were attending something else, and that was just not high in the priority list. They had another crisis going on. Maybe, you know, there were some supply issues with um, getting stuff stocked on the plane, and they were attending to that, and there was somebody struggling with luggage. I mean, come on. All right, this means nothing. How else should one dress in June from Kingston, Miami? Sweats, jeans. Well, here she's like going extra. She's going to hyperbole here. Sweats, jeans, turtleneck, three-piece suit, four-length skirt. Responded one Twitter user. Okay, I don't know if it's a he or she, but her breasts and butt were covered. Really? <laughs> well, sorta. You policed her curves. Shame on you. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Isn't wearing clothing generally policing everyone's curves? You're self-policing if you're wearing clothing. You know, it's not. It's not American nudist airlines, right? It's not American naturalist airlines. I mean, come on. Have some self-respect, American. Okay, you're getting on American Airlines. You know, this this country. Even though there's always a spectrum and a bell curve and there's always been criminality and, and uh, psychopathy and things like that going on um, and antisocial behavior and, and uh, you know and not everyone is uh, has the same spirit. This country used to be uh, have a little more decency, right? American Airlines dress code doesn't ban rompers or any specific clothing and only tells passengers to quote dress appropriately. Bare feet or offensive clothing aren't allowed. Well, they don't define that, do they? All right? Offensive clothing. What does that mean? Well, maybe it says something on it, or maybe it's see-through, right? Or maybe it's maybe it's like hugging every freaking nick and cranny on your body, or maybe it's really loose and gonna fall off, or revealing by, um, you know, I remember one time on a boat, um, a neighbor's boat, and he had an older sister, like he was older than me, and um, I was. Okay, my friend lived next door to him. was my age. But then he took us out on the boat. He's a few years older than us. And I think he was skiing or something. And his, his older sister, and she was gorgeous. Gorgeous gal. I don't know how old she was. I mean, we were early teens, I think. Early teens. And she must have been college age or whatever. And she had on, a, you know, bikini bottoms. And the elastic was out of it. She was a very thin girl. But I remember sitting in the passenger seat and she's in the driver's seat you know and she was kind of standing driving the boat and her bikini was loose i could see right sideways through her like the opening in her bikini and see her her pubic hair and stuff you know i mean as a teenage boy that was quite interesting but that was uh you know it was loose clothing kind of inappropriate i think if her brother or dad noticed that they'd say hey you might want to get a new bathing suit you know, <laughs> she should have. Anyway, okay, according to the NAC, however, the NAACP warned travelers in 2017 that American Airlines has a recent history of incidents involving American, African-American flyers. And that may be true. You know, I'm sure that statistic fluctuates, right? And they didn't say anything in 2018. In 2017, they did. Make no mistake, this is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, I think. It's, I think that's what it stands for. Um, and why would they not 
you know, you, you think they're participating in a lot of this division and, and racism. I want to share something else. I belong to, um, I guess, I don't know if it's a group or, you know, somebody I'm friends with or following. Um, uh, yeah, like on social media, I, I think it's a group or whatnot. And um, these are Christians, by the way. Mostly, mostly black people. I've noticed, and you might say, oh, what I'm saying is racist. No, it's, uh, I'm reporting. Okay. I'm just reporting to you what I've experienced and my observation and my conclusion, or at least my working conclusion right now, or working thesis. I've found black people to be obsessed with race. Not every one of them, not every black person is obsessed with race. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. Use your head. I'm hoping people listening to this are a little smarter than that. And I'm not going to answer comments or any idiot who is going to like start splitting hairs or, um, God, use your brain. I don't have time for stupid people. I really don't have precious time for stupid people. And I'm all, I'm all about here, like sharpening your discernment and your critical thinking skills and like that. But I'm telling you what, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to work with remedial people. All right. This is not remedial school. All right. If you're that stupid and you want to come at me for saying that I'm racist or that's a horrible thing to say if I say that I've noticed that in this group, which a lot of people in this group, and most of them are quote-unquote African-Americans or black people, they're obsessed with, with color. It's sad. I've even chimed in on it, and I've gotten acknowledged as uh, being right. Thank God for the spirit of God, because these, like I said, these are mostly Christian people and they recognize the truth of what I was saying. And you know what? There, there are a lot of victims of, um, just, it's just, it's just the way the culture is right now, you know? Okay. Let's move on. Um, uh, just this, I had no idea this is going to turn into an hour long episode on this stupid incident. Um, for several months now, I was been monitoring a pattern of disturbing incidents reported by American African American passengers specific to American Airlines. Really, do you think just they've just been monitoring for several months, or when they did start realizing there was some incidents that we're going to monitor all the time now? Because believe me, it's like laying in wait for blood. It's like we're going to wait and we're going to, you know, we're going to notice this and we're going to report on it. And um, as soon as that scale tips and there's more, there's one more African American incident than there is. Uh, an incident with honkies, then we're going to cry out. You know, that's just kind of the way the world seems to work, doesn't it? In light of these confrontations, we have today taken the action of issuing national advisory, alerting travelers, especially African-Americans, to exercise caution. Like this is a danger. And that booking and boarding flights on American Airlines could subject them to disrespectful, discriminatory, or unsafe conditions. Wow. That's big time, man. Do you know how big a company American Airlines is? Do you know how many people work there? Do you think any black people work there? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, when you read all this stuff, you don't think about these things. Yeah, American Airlines is not just this big white uh, corporatocracy that has a racial chip on its shoulder. But that's what they're saying. That's what they're implying. I'm sure they have Asians. I'm sure they have uh, white people. I'm sure they have people who maybe are from Europe and they're American citizens now and have an accent and work there. I mean, they, they've got all stripes. It's American. It's what Americans like. America's like. You can hardly go to the grocery store and you're not going to run into people from other cultures and countries. Anywhere. Almost anywhere. Um, boarding flights and Americans could subject them to disrespectful, discriminatory, unsafe conditions. Well, you know what? So could go into the grocery store. Right? So could go into the movie house. The, the what do you call it? Theater. The NAACP lifted the advisory several months later after the airline agreed to a series of changes. Okay, I don't know. I can't go all down into this. That's the end of the article. Pretty one-sided. You know, except the, except the one lady... I uh, forgot her name, who said, uh, we want to have, you know, we strive our best to serve everyone and keep them safe and all that stuff, which I believe is true. 
Now, does that mean every flight doesn't have any problems or every personality? You know, there's there are stewards and stewardesses and pilots alike that, you know, they're human beings. And uh, are they getting enough sleep? Are they having family issues? Are they having marital issues? You know, I mean, they're human beings. That's crazy, man. It's just crazy. She believes a white passenger would not have been asked to leave the plane. So what's the upshot, Uncle Benny? Why did you drag us through this article, if you hung with me, by the way? Because this is just one story among who knows how many that keep coming down the pike. And it's put in your face. It's put in the national... You might want to think of the Drudge Report as the national consciousness. One of the, uh, one of the places that, you know, the propaganda... It's one of the... Um, faucets of propaganda, mind control, and um, steering people's thinking. It's up here, you know, it's kind of a an article. Here's her picture. Um, inappropriate romper. I don't know. I, you know, this woman, I think she's got issues. Now, I wasn't privy to the confrontation. I wasn't privy to the talk or how the tone and all these kinds of things. I'd really wish that she would have recorded it and we could have seen what her tone was in response, you know. I really wish we could have seen the tone of the the uh, American Airlines people and what, how they spoke to her. Maybe they set her off. I don't know. But she's I believe I think it's very reasonable to conclude that this had a lot to do with her perceptions and reaction. And she got free tickets out of it. She got free tickets out of it. So what was her motivation at the outset, right? Has she heard of anything like this before? You know, guess what? You might get a slew of people wearing rompers hoping to get free tickets. Well, you better let me on this plane, you know, or I'm going to make a scene, you know, or I'm going to write a letter and they get free tickets. I don't know. All right, moving on. So I want to play this for a second. Gosh, this video, it's going to be two hours long. I don't have time for this. I don't, you don't either, but I'm making my witness, okay? This is, a, this is a primitive Baptist church. I've played music from, I'm not going to get a copyright strike from this, but thankfully, and I was thinking about opening with, with a, one of these, but um, I chose Box of Rain instead. And this is a, a hymn, spiritual song. This is a primitive Baptist church, and I've never been to a primitive Baptist church. I have, I guess, in video, but not in person. And um, it's kind of like, I guess, Church of Christ, where they don't use instruments. And as I really kind of like that, in a sense. And um, But what I want to, I'm going to play this for a minute, and we're going to talk about the clothing. So it you know it continues repetitively and it's a great you know and it, and um, if I played a minute or two longer it, it gets a little more lively and there's more women standing up and they're walking around and I might do that but what I want to point out is ain't no titties popping out in this church why because they're dressed appropriately they're dressed modestly and guess what I can see curves on this woman I can see curves on this one you know they're still curvy still very female now should should you get on the plane dressed like you're going to church? 
I don't know. I I've I used to. I don't anymore. But I remember when I would fly when I was younger. I always would dress up a little. Nobody told me to do that. I just did. I don't know why. Um. Anyway, but that's not my point. Is that you don't need to necessarily dress like you're going to church to go everywhere. Who can afford to wear your quote Sunday best? That's why it's called your Sunday best. It's like your your most you know it's your most valuable clothing and that's you know very very nice and usually probably more expensive. Um, and you wear it to church. You're not wearing it to work and getting it dirty and torn and soiled and all those things. But my point is is that you know what in a church setting modesty is is uh, one of the one of the precepts of for Christian women and men by the way. You know, modesty. And uh, I closed the article, but, you know, was that woman dressed very modestly? No. You know, I don't know what her beliefs are. Um, she may profess or believe and she's a Christian woman, but and she may be, and but she doesn't really, hasn't reached that part of the book yet, I guess. I don't know. But my point is, is that, you know what? Ain't no titties popping out in this church because these people are dressed appropriately. I don't think any one of these women, I don't care if they're black or or uh, female, do you think they're going to be taken off the plane to have a talk? No, right? So there you go. I mean, if they're not going to be taken off the plane and had a talk with, then that talk had nothing to do with race or gender other than, other than, or her being a woman, other than her womanly bits might just be, you know, bouncing out in the in in the light for everyone to see in the first sign of turbulence. I don't know. I mean, that's just that's just a that's a reasonable conclusion on my point, my part, I think. But you know, let me um, let's move on a little bit. Okay. Well, there were younger ones up here as well, dressed, but like you know. The way they're dressed, again, the, ain't nothing wrong with that. White or black, red or yellow, okay? And again, you don't have to dress like a church lady to get on a plane, but you also don't have to dress like you're, you know, sitting by the pool. Okay, anyway, I beat this to death, you know, I'm sorry. Um, really, I'm sorry, because that was way too long. Um, let's see. You know, I, I pulled this up. This just happened to be on the on the sludge on the drudge report too. surveillance video shows a group about 60 teens vandalizing looting Walgreens on South Street in Philadelphia here. Oh look, they're African Americans. Well, are are they racist? I mean, the news people, aren't they racist for reporting this? Are they racist? Look. They don't look white. They're all black. Oh, they must be racist. Six, surveillance cameras inside the store show 60 boys and girls storming into, this would be horrifying this would be frightening white or black that would be horrifying running around knocking items off the shelves fleeing the store have you ever seen one of these on video I'm not going to play the video I've, I've seen this before not in person but it's it's quite uh, you know God forbid if if um, someone I loved uh, especially an older person was in the Walgreens when this happened you know that's frightening and dangerous. Um, anyway, I just I just thought that was quite a juxtaposition. You know, maybe maybe she hates her own kind. Maybe she's like a self holding Jew, this black lady, because she's reporting on these these teens. You know, these youths. Okay. Um, anyway, that, that didn't go over so good. I mean, I was trying to make a point of juxtaposition that like you know they don't say anything about their race of these teens doing that. I've never, by the way. I'm not saying there haven't been any white people involved, but I've never seen one of these flash mobs of, of of like 60 white children doing this. And you know, they're victims. They're they're living in maybe different circumstances and things like that. Their culture, the music they listen. I I get it. I get it. Uncle Benny, you must be a racist. No, I, I've been around though. All right, I've been around. Um, I would I would definitely have no problem with you calling me a stereotypist. Go ahead. You know what? Our our made our we're, our brains are, and I'm an odds player. Don't forget, I'm an odds player. I've learned to assess the odds, and our brains are geared for pattern recognition. You recognize patterns, so guess what? You're a stereotypist too, in all likelihood. You may suppress certain things, but probably to your own hurt. 
It's kind of how we get around in the world, you know? Um, all right. Psyche, I mean, I'm a realist, too. Let's get real. If you're not, if you're not a realist, step up. You don't have to watch this. You don't have to listen to me. But don't slander me. Let me tell you something. You don't know me. and But let me tell you something. I left out something I want to say about uh, Dr. Tisha Rowe. Bible say, he that hides hatred with lying lips and he that utters a slander is a fool. Well, you know what? Is she hiding hatred? Because she might be lying about them being misogynistic and racist or their reasonings, okay? And she's definitely slandering them. And so was the NAACP. What's that say that they are? Well, I'm not going to say it, but let's just say it's foolish to, to uh, hide hatred with lying lips and utter slanders against people, corporations, all that kind of stuff. Have I ever done it? Probably. Will I ever do it again? Probably. You know, um, we got to be careful. We can, we need to set a watch upon our own lips because we, and that's why we need to be in the word like this all the time because it's real easy. It's real easy. I'm thinking that song, it's so easy, it's so easy to fall. <laughs> it's so easy, it's so easy to, you know, misspeak. It really is. Especially if you, you're you feeling emotional about something. Well, and she was. You know, she definitely, for what right or wrong, she got her she got her feelers hurt. She got her panties in a bunch for some reason. Oh, Ben, Uncle Benny, that was sexist. <laughs> Maybe. I didn't think about it. It's just an expression. Don't get your panties in a bunch. All right? It's keeping it real. Okay? Keeping it real. All right. Here we go. Got to finish up. Um... Oh, one more thing on the race issue, right? I didn't even I didn't even read this yet. Let's see where Pelosi says Trump. This was in the headlines for a couple days. Pelosi says Trump is trying to make America white again with census question. You know, I don't I don't know. I, I haven't even read this, but what what poison? What even the article being published, like you know, the story of it. She created the story by saying this. How inflammatory and divisive is that? And accusative and... And I don't know. I'm not trying to defend this character. But this character is definitely stirring the pot of um, division. Remember, united we stand, divided we fall. You know? Are we one nation under God? Can you, can you really say that? Can you really pledge allegiance to the flag? One nation under God? Is, I mean, where's the, think about the truth of the words that you're saying when you say them. All right. Um, let's see here. This is about keeping, you know, his hat, make America white again. Well, I think I think the hat said make him wear America great again. What you know? What? Gosh, what a vicious woman! What a vicious woman! I don't really know what to say. I mean, I've I've heard, seen articles about her before, and you probably are somewhat of the same mind about I am. Is that, I mean, how do these people keep voting her in if the voting even is is uh, really the reason she's there? You know, I I do believe the voting. There's a monopoly on the voting machines in the United States with Diebold Corporation. There's a um there's a they're mostly electronic. Um, there's gerrymandering that goes on. There's all kinds of ways for election fraud so what how do these people get in there why are the powers that shouldn't be the powers that shouldn't be and i'm not even saying these are the powers that shouldn't be these are these are actors on a stage these are puppets these are people who do do you think she acts autonomously really sometimes it seems like she can barely put two thoughts together let alone be this evil mastermind of how to stoke the fires same with that aoc character Okay. All right, moving on. All right, study. Psychiatric diagnoses are scientifically meaningless in treating mental health. So this is a study that came out of England. Um, no two people are exactly alike. Therefore, attempting to classify each unique individual's mental health issues into neat categories just doesn't work. I'd say it's a tool, okay? Um, but what does that mean, just doesn't work? Doesn't work for what? That's the claim coming out of the UK. Sure to ruffle some psychologist's feathers. Um, more people are being diagnosed diagnosed with mental illness than ever before. I'd say that's true. More people than ever before are on psychiatric on psychotropic medications, whether it's 
stuff for anxiety, just simple tranquilizers, Xanax and whatnot, um, to um, ADD medications from Adderall and Ritalin, and I'm sure there's other ones, to um, they're taking uh, sleeping pills every night, Ambien, this, that, that kind of thing. And then you've got your SSRI reuptake inhibitors. You've got your serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You've got um, your people taking the antidepressants. More than ever before, okay, multiple factors can be attributed to this rise. Many people blame the popularity of social media, um, increased screen time. Today's day and age, more people may be willing to admit that they're having mental health issues. That's probably true. Um, whatever the reason, it's generally believed that psychiatric diagnosis is the first step to recovery. All right. That's why they've, the University of Liverpool concluded it's scientifically meaningless and worthless as tools to accurately identify and address mental stress in an individual. Well, and then go on and talk about the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Uh, let, me, let me just make a couple points. You could go talk to a psychiatrist. You, Mr. You know, Jolly-Go-Lucky, Mrs. Jolly, you know, um, Bright and Cheery, and go sit down with them for one hour, 50 minutes, and tell them all your world, and they could diagnose you with something in that book. Don't believe me? It's true. You could fit some kind of uh, definition, in all likelihood, of one of these, one thing or the other. Okay. Um, a lot of people, by the way, bipolar disorder. A lot of people live in this identity. I would also, I, I would say, in agreement with this, that y you know. Be very careful to ever go see a psychiatrist because once you get diagnosed with one of these things, you know, good luck um, getting that, that hellhound off your tail. Good luck, just like getting diagnosed with high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Once they get you on the medication, they don't ever want to take you off. And um, it's also sometimes dangerous to get off the medication unless you do it a certain way. But look, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, depressive, by the way, that's not even a real thing. Okay, there's other words for it. Um, depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, trauma-related disorders. Um, all right, we're not going to go into all this, but the, the point is, is that um, I want to read you something from the Word. Okay. We are given a sound mind, you know. We're given a sound mind. So, um, I'm going to read from 2 Timothy chapter 1, I thank God for whom I serve for my forefathers with a pure conscience, that without ceasing I have a remembrance of you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in my grandmother and your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it's in you as well. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is in you by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus, not his real name, before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, not his real name, who has, abol who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, which is the good news of his glorious salvation for us. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which, I, which cause I also suffer these things, Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I think I probably read a little more than I meant to copy out here, um, but but what I want to, what I really want to focus on here, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, this isn't to say that somebody who is a believer or is saved. It, or has the Holy Spirit is not ever fearful or is not ever um, uh, feeling weak or is not ever uh, feeling unsteady of mind. But I want to point out that the spirit of fear 
is at the root of many of people's mental illnesses, mental instability. Spirit of fear, um, not stirring up the gift of God. Okay, The gift of God is what? The Holy Spirit. How do we stir it up? Being in the Word. The Word is spirit. Yeah. I call to remember it's the unfeigned faith that is in you. Okay. Have faith. So faith and love and stirring up the Spirit of God in us through through the Word of God, through prayer. Walking in love. These are all practices of, of, of you know, um, realizing the gift of a sound mind. God has given you a sound mind. You know, what makes it unsound? Dun, dun, dun. Well, Mr. Drudge's little uh, sewer pipe, that can do it, right? MSNBC's sewer pipe can do it. Maybe the CDs in your car or your MP3 player, maybe you got some sewer pipes there. That can do it. Think about it. Your your soul is not a toilet, or is it? So be careful of the shite that's being uh, defecated into your brain and your heart and your soul, right? That's what we're here for today, okay? Um, we can wash ourselves with the water of the word, you know? Uh, wind and water. Wind is spirit. I wrote that, remember? Wind and water. Sun and shower. He's the glorious sun. He's the light of our salvation. He who's of the spirit is like the wind. Nobody knows where they're coming from or where they're going. Because it's like the wind, it listeth, is what it says, you know. The wind and water. Washing of the water of the word. He's the water of life, you know. Love will see you through. Love will see you through. Love will see you through. Maybe you are tired and broken with words half spoken and thoughts unclear. You know, you are going to have words half spoken. That article was half written, right? If half, about the lady on the plane. Thoughts unclear. Well, I'd say thoughts were unclear. And uh, a box of rain will ease the pain and love will see you through. You know? Someone is always waiting to direct you while you're sleeping. Well, be awake. Awake, O oh thou sleeper. <laughs> See how this all works together? Rain is falling from a heavy sky. It is. You know, it's it's raining out there, man. Heavy rain. The floods. The floods come. The floods come in. Okay. So, Bible also say, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests and my requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Not his real name. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just... Oh, hold on. Back up the truck. It, it goes on to say, if think on these things. Okay. Well, when you spend... When you listen to the news uncritically, while framing it in the Word of God, when you listen to this junk... Are you focusing? Are you even doing this? Are you focusing on? Is your, are you thinking on things that are true? So it's okay to think on these things that are lies if you think about them in truth. Does that make sense? That's good. You can have that for free. Okay. You don't have to avoid it just because it's not true. You just have to have to frame it in the truth. There you go. Whatsoever things are honest. Are these news heads honest? ever are your politicians honest you know i didn't pull it up uh, the first thing that popped in my mind when i just read that when i said that just now was that recent image you've probably been familiar with of that uh that that um character alexandria ocasio cortez um standing outside the fence in her white outfit and she's almost like breaking down crying well, other photographs from other angles show that she's acting in front of an empty parking lot. She's acting like there's all kinds of uh, grievous things on the other side of that fence with the, um, you know, these invaders that have been rounded up or turned themselves in to try to get asylum, whatever. 
you know, honest. This she's an actress, by the way. She auditioned for this role. Um, I think it's called the Democratic for Social Justice or something like that. Democrats for I don't know. There's some there's some group of people who pretty much advertised were looking for someone to be the puppet masters to, and she won the bid. She won the audition. Congratulations. Now I think she probably goes off script sometimes. I bet I bet she's a hard one to handle. You know, I don't know. I, uh, you know, it, it almost doesn't matter whether she comes back or not because they'll find another one better than her. That, that what I mean by better than her, worse than her, but can, can do the job better because, and maybe she's doing exactly everything that's wanted to be done because she certainly does is, is part of the art of misdirection and she gets a lot of attention. You know, we got to be careful what's competing for our attention, don't we? And, um, you know, again, I thank you for your time if you made it this far through. I really do not like that it's gone this long, but, you know, I got to listen. When you're rolling out the dough, you know, when you're when you're rolling out the dough, you got to sometimes knead it again and roll it out again. And that's what I'm having to do here sometimes, just really just wrap our brains around this. And, and you know, um, the more you do this, though, you can internalize this, Right. Like I have, I read this. I mean, it has helped me to talk about it in this, these videos. But you know, when I read the articles or hear the news, it's a bit of a lonely world. But I think like this. That goes through me like this, and it's different. It's different than it used to be for me, and it's way different than most people I know. Not everyone. I'm not the only one. But I'm telling you, thank God for that. I want more people to. To, to not be deceived. Take heed that no man deceive you. Here we go, Matthew 24. What shall be the sign of the time of your coming, your return? Take heed that no man deceive you. For in the latter days, um, many will depart from the faith, and there'll be, there'll be many coming in his name, saying they are Christ. And, um, you know, we're there. That's where we are. First thing he said, take heed. Do your due diligence. Make an effort. To not be deceived. Are you doing that? Or are you just trusting on uh, your own judgment? Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to be deceived. I'm too smart for that. Man, it, smarts has a little bit to do with it, but not a lot. It has to do with having the, the Holy Spirit and the Word in you. And He will bring to you, to your remembrance, things. You know, these 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 things I post in the description of the Word, you know, I didn't just open the, open the, the book and just they fall out and... I'm rusty, I told you. But guess what? The Holy Spirit brings these things to remembrance, and I'll look them up and copy them out to put them in the description. But I, I've known about it. I know them because the Holy Spirit brings it to remembrance. And many times I'm talking, just like awake, O thou sleeper, or something like that. The Holy Spirit brings it to remembrance. I don't know where that just comes from, you know? And and I uh, see, I almost wish I hadn't said that, because I'm not trying to um, somehow... Uh, um, hang some kind of uh, special um, mm, what am I trying to say characterize my this little broadcast or my words as having some kind of special you know um, spiritual power or something that's you know that's only the Lord can quicken it in your heart or mind if, if this there's anything any merit to it okay I'm just I shouldn't have said that possibly but I will tell you that, like, I did not come into this broadcast thinking about some of the verses um, of what the Bible say that I thought of. And I hadn't maybe thought of them in years. But the Holy Spirit is what I attribute it to. And give God the glory for it. Thank God he's never left me or forsaken me. Because I certainly have, have wandered off. I certainly have. All the time. I'm needing a shepherd. Keep me close. Draw me close to you, oh Lord. You know, draw me close to you. Never let me go. And I think we'll go out on that song. But whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, meaning Paul, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, the reason I read that was about that the God of peace will be with you, that you will have 
uh, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, meaning all your circumstances, everything going on, you can still walk in peace no matter what's going on because the peace of God passes understanding and will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. That is real name. Meaning through the, through the spirit of God, through the word of God, it will keep you and keep your mind on track, sound, right? In joy, in hope, in belief, in faith, right? Now, Jesus also, Jesus' real name, Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you should, what you should eat, neither for your body, what should, you should put on. The life is more than meat or food. The body is more than clothing, more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which, which neither have a storehouse nor a barn, and God feeds them. How much more are you better than the fowls, meaning the birds, right? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Or, you know, you can't add any inches, you know, to your height. If you then be not able to do that which is least, why take thought for the rest? So if you can't do this little thing, why are you worried about these big things? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They, they toil not, they spin not. And yet I say to you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Are you or I of little faith today? I hope at the end of this uh, video that you your faith is, is strengthened. And mine too. Mine is. Mine usually is. And seek not you what you shall eat or what you shall drink neither be of doubtful mind it's another it's another thing okay about mental illnesses which is prevalent today doubtful minds that basically i looked up the word in the strongs or um and you know i looked up the hebrew or greek or the greek in this case and anxious you know listen i'm not sitting here talking down or condescendingly i talking to myself you don't think I get anxious? Man, all you're seeing is a podcast, okay? <laughs> you're not seeing my life day to day. I've got a lot of stuff I start worrying and thinking about and getting out in the future, or dwelling on the past. I mean, you name it, right? For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father, you have a Father in heaven. You are loved, okay? Who sent his only Son, only begotten Son, excuse me, that to to make you his brethren to die for your sins to adopt you to graft you in to give you a spirit to cause you to to redeem you from sin and death right anyway it says you know the nations of the world seek after all these things and your father knows that you have need of these things he brings it down to the personal you you ladies and gentlemen boys and girls my brother my sister my friend So, and lastly, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, I talked about having power and love and a sound, line, sound mind and, and focusing on things that are pure and good. But well, look, greater love has no man than this, than the guy that throws himself on a grenade or, you know, um, takes a bullet. Or, you know, I'm just, those are probably not good analogies, but what I'm pointing at is, that Christ died for our sins. He laid his life down for us. We can't even comprehend what he gave up. He wasn't just a man who just died and then was resurrected. He was he was God himself and he left. Uh, he came to become a man and everything he gave up and forsook, you know, if we knew what that was, we don't even know what that was like for him to take on the sins of the whole world. He was sweating great drops of blood before he, you know, he knew what he was going to go through. And he even prayed, Father, take this cup from me. Wow, you know. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I just barely, I can barely even, it's like looking at the sun. You can barely apprehend it, you know, without having to kind of like shake your head and go, I just, I can't get it, you know. But anyway, all right, so that's, um, that's quite a bit for one day. This I bet this is two hours. And God bless you if you made it this far one way or the other, if you split it up to watch it. But, you know, um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find something real quick to go out on you know and uh, let's just take a chance here uh, we, we guess what I even skipped Managing an article is really hard, how about that monday.com makes it easy monday.com is a plot I don't know if there's a good version or not, but I'm going to have to roll with it. Okay. We skipped an article. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Never let me go. Never let me go. 